course, every day around here is a special day. If you Hallelujah. You hang around all <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And, and uh, but today is a very special day. And I rejoice in that. Because as a pastor, there are always things you live for and hope for and long for and, and wait to see if they'll come. Amen. If you'll open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, we'll start at verse 13. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers loved by the Lord. Because from the beginning, God chose you to be saved. Now, I want you to get this. I want How many of you in this room honestly believe that God chose you to be saved? Amen. Amen. Right? It's not an accident. That, that, that's not an accident that happens. And it's not something unusual that you just all of a sudden got saved. It's because God has purposes, right? And brothers, beloved by the Lord, because from the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sacrificing work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm, hold to your teachings we passed on to you, whether by word or mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and, and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Now, how many of you know what that's really saying to you? Okay, Happy, I see you shaking your head. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you interpret that. Uh, stand firm. Spread the word. That's right. So, uh, Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord, and you know He's going to give you all the strength and endurance you need, no matter what comes your way. You know, because He's already ordained your paths. So you just got to trust in Him and let Him guide you. Hallelujah. Okay. What I'm getting at here, what I believe Paul was getting at, is first of all, everything begins with God's call. That's right. Amen. All right. Now you may not realize it, but you didn't just accidentally come to get saved. There was a reason from your birth, or maybe before you were born, when God decided that he was going to choose you and use you to do things, and you go through life and you think, you know, it's nothing, and then all of a sudden you get saved and you think, okay, well what, you don't, what you're missing out on is the fact that God has divine purpose for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No Hallelujah. Earth that God doesn't have a divine Amen. purpose That's for. Right. Yes. And God is saying to people, look, I want you to look at me because I'm going to do things to you and through you that are going to change the world. Amen. And God is constantly doing that. But we have to wake up to the understanding that we have been chosen by God to do specific things. Yes. You know, uh, I, I'm, I've been, my wife's been bugging me about writing a book. It's got to start when I was four years old in my parents' bedroom and a doctor has told them I'm going to die. And what a disappointment for him. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, my, my parents heard me making some noise and they thought that's what he meant when he told them that, that I was going to, you know, I'll do some whatever and then I'm going to, that means I'm dying. I'll make some sounds. 
and, and, uh, and so all of a sudden they're hearing me and my mother says to my dad, run to the telephone, because back then you didn't have telephones in the house. Now you have to understand, this is a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the, lo the local telephone was down the street in the corner store. Okay? Wow. And, and, and so dad had to run down the street, get on the phone, call the doctor. The doctor came back to the house and came in, and he walked back out to my parents and he was angry because I didn't die. <laughs> What I'm getting at is, God chose, chooses us before we even realize that God has chosen us. That's right. And the bell doesn't often ring in our heads that we've been chosen by God for something specific. But then all of a sudden you discover, discover as you go through life that... Uh, that, that God's got different kinds of plans for you, and all of a sudden you start dreaming dreams of a future. And it's not at all what the devil planned for you. It's what God is planning for you. Amen. And you may not even be saved at the time, but that's all right. God's going to invade your life anyhow, because he's planting a hook in your jaw, and he's going to draw you. And so one day, you're somewhere along the way, you're going to feel that tug of the Holy Spirit, and you're going to give your life to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And, and you know, when, when, when that happened to me, my parents weren't even saved. They, they hadn't gone to any kind of church like that. Come on. Now, uh, it wasn't until a, a, several years later when some lady told my dad that there was a church where people are getting healed because my sister was born with her feet messed up and she couldn't wear normal shoes and she couldn't walk like normal. And so this lady tells my dad and my dad goes home and tells my mother and my mother, we're not, not, it's not a Catholic church so my mother wouldn't go. But my dad takes my sister and my brother and me and that day God heals my sister and all of a sudden this girl who couldn't walk very far is marching in her school band oh, uh, right. Memorial Day, in a Memorial Day parade, which wasn't supposed to happen. Right. Except Amen. I want you to understand, when God chooses you, yes. it doesn't make any difference what everybody else thinks. Really? Right. Preach it. Amen. It doesn't make any difference. It's God has a plan for your life. And, and, and somehow you're going to fulfill God's plan, whether you realize it or not. And that's what's so exciting to me, is the fact that that uh, God, if, if we, even without us being awake to the drawing of the Holy Spirit, He's speaking to us. Amen. Thank and I you. I want you to understand something. You are not called to dream dreams. You are called to fight the battle. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. The battle is always going to be there. Thank yes. you. You'll always have it. Yes. All your life. Even if you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, you'll have a battle. But when you accept Him, then you really got a battle. But the best part of that is, when you accept Him, you're going to win. Amen. No matter Amen. what the devil thinks or what the devil plans, you're going to win because you've accepted Jesus and Jesus is saying, okay, you're in my hands and, and, and it's going to work out. Hallelujah. And mm. let me just say this. It may not seem like it, but if you really walk with the Lord and trust Him, what He'll do in your life will be probably the greatest thing you could ever dream of doing. Really? Hallelujah. For sure. I'm serious. That's right. All oh, you trust in Him. That's right. Hallelujah. The, 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 though, when you serve the Lord, you find Him doing all kinds of supernatural some things Amen. that you can't imagine happening, yes. but it happens. Yes. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is in the picture. Yes. The Holy Spirit comes upon you, and whether you realize it or not, you're doing it. You know, in my neighborhood, <clears throat> I grew up in Detroit. Now that should just automatically settle the sentence for everything. Anybody who knows anything about Michigan and knows anything about Detroit knows that uh, every neighborhood had its own gang and every neighborhood 
survived by its gang and and the purple whatever out of Detroit. <laughs> you know, but but when God enters your life, it doesn't make any difference what else is going on around you. Hallelujah. When God enters your life, and you know what? Sometimes He enters your life when you don't know it. Yes, so true. And you didn't really invite Him. He just came in. And you don't even know how He got there. But somewhere along the way, all of a sudden, you hear some tuggings in your heart towards doing things that you never, you know, the rest of the gang are going to do this and you're drawn to do this. Your parents may want you to do this, but you feel drawn to do this. Yes. And somewhere along the way, you discover that the drawing out, pulling you this way, is God. Hallelujah. And God is saying, I've got work for you that I want you to do. And if you pick up and read Paul's letters, okay? Paul's father did not have a plan for him to do what Paul did. If you go back to the book of Acts and read it, his dad wanted him to be a Pharisee. His father was a Pharisee. His dad sent him to school to be trained to be a Pharisee. When he was 12, he was sent from home to, <clears throat> to Jerusalem to be trained up to be this Pharisee. And he starts out that way, but there's something about it that happens on a road. Yeah, really. One day. One day he's on the road going to Damascus to do what he wants to do, and God changes the plan. Yeah. And all of a sudden, his whole life changes Amen. in that one trip. And no matter, it doesn't make any difference. I can't imagine what his father must have thought. From that time on, I mean, this father, who was a Pharisee, who was a leadership among the Jews, and he's trained his son to do the same thing, all of a sudden experiences the fact that his son has changed. And he's not going to do that. And on his trip to Damascus, where he was going to, to have Christians arrested and killed and whatever, all of that changes. And they're the ones who rescue him and drink, hang him in, in a basket over the wall so he gets out of the city so the Jews won't kill him. What I'm getting at is, and I want you to get this in your, Interesting. In your spirit, that, that, that the, 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 the Christians aren't called to be just dreamers. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to dream. It means that God's going to give you God dreams. Hallelujah. He's going to give you God dreams, which are so much different than human dreams. Amen. All right? Yeah. And, and they're so much different about everything else that's going on. Yeah. When they're God dreams, you find yourself focusing in a different world than you ever thought. You know, and, and that's, that's the excitement of following God. That's the excitement of setting your life up with that purpose. God, you called me, here I am. Yes, I and then you let Him take charge. And you discover that when God takes charge, there are things that are going to happen you never dream. Amen, amen. amen. You never, it never enters your mind. You'll end up going places you never thought you'd ever go. You'd have promotions on your job that you know, everybody else is going to be jealous of and they're going to wonder why you got promoted. Well, it's because of God. Yes, I it, 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 it's God. And it's the fact of once you get your life so committed to Him, pardon me, He's going to take over and, and show you how really to have uh, a life, a life. And I mean that. A real life. Yes. I feel sorry for people who think the only way they're going to have a real life is if they get high on drugs. Yes. And, and now that California is going to have the privilege of selling marijuana, everybody's talking about how wealthy California is going to become. <laughs> yeah. And when I heard that, I thought, God, are we really that stupid? Mm-hmm. Are the people who are talking about getting wealthy 
Is that all they concer are concerned about is how much money they're going to make and they don't care about the people's lives they destroy? And there's a difference when God gives you a dream and when the devil gives you a dream. Only what the devil gives you is really nightmares. Mm. Well, we'll become. Right? But God gives you <coughs> dreams. But when he gives you the dream, you don't have to fight to fulfill that dream. He's going to see to it that you live out that dream that he has given you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. Now, he's, 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 he, when God calls you, he calls you to the greatest privileges and, and opportunities that life can offer you. I'm an old man. Sometimes I feel like an old man. There are times when the Holy Spirit comes upon me when I don't care. It doesn't make any difference how old I am. I don't feel old anymore. Amen. I Amen. I want to start thinking I can do things right. that my natural man says, dummy, you can't do that anymore. But when you're walking with the Lord, he, he just does, it, it, you know, it, it's so neat. Because of the way he 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 comes to help us, and and uh, there 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 are two things, and if, if you turn to Acts eighteen verses nine, uh, Acts Acts verse eighteen, starting at verse nine, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, "Don't be afraid, keep on speaking." Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed on for a year and a half, <clears throat> teaching them the word of God. And then skip down to verse 19. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Now, I want you to get this. Here's Paul. He's had that experience on the road to Damascus. The guys in Damascus find a way to get him out because the Jews are ready to kill him. And, and so they put him in a basket and hang him out over the wall. In, in those days, some of the houses were built into the wall. And so the, there was a window and they put Paul in a basket and lowered him down outside that wall and off he went. Paul had no idea on that day that he's going to write letters to the church in Thessalonica, really? in Thessalonica yes. to tell them what's going to happen. He had no idea of these things. And that's what's so marvelous here. That when, when, when we commit ourselves to God, there, he, he steps in, and there's a couple of things, okay? And, and what I really want you to get is, number one, he wants to teach you. Amen. All right? The Holy Spirit wants to teach you. Yes, hallelujah. And, and, and sometimes that means he wants you in a class where somebody's teaching the Word, and you're getting the Word in you. Sometimes he wants to get you alone with him, yeah. where yeah. he can talk to you. Yes and share things with you and prepare you to do something you never dreamed you'd ever do. Absolutely. Yeah. But he Lord. takes that time to prepare you for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, I laugh. It, it, you know, I'm thinking of quitting and retiring. My wife said, I'm never going to retire. I'm going to resign. <laughs> 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 but what I'm getting at is, is when when we let God help us, and that's not that. When he, when He comes in to help you, you're going to find yourself doing things you never dreamed you could do. Really. Mm -hmm. Even even sometimes, if it's a mechanical repair job, and you've never done anything like that before, all of a sudden you're going to discover that you've got, you know how to do it. How do you do it? I don't know how I know. I just know to do it. 
Well, that's where God comes upon us. You see, he, he doesn't want his children to be ignorant. He doesn't want us to be abandoned. And there's not, there are times when we've not had that proper training that he comes on the scene by the Holy Spirit and he does it for us so that we are prepared to go on doing the things he has called us to do. And that's where the fun comes in. I'm serious. It, 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 <clears throat> pardon me. There, there are so many times when God wants to step into your life and, and help you with a situation. You get stuck on it and you're saying, I don't know what to do. What's going to happen here now? And God is saying, trust me. And he wants to come into your life and show you how to do something that you never thought you could do. Yes, and, yes. And, and, and that's God. God wants to do that. Hallelujah. You know, for every one of you in this room, God has a purpose. He has a divine plan for every person in this room. Yes, he does. And he has a divine plan for every empty seat. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's right. And the trouble is that the people who aren't in those seats are missing what God has for them. Amen. But God is saying to you, I've got a plan for you. And God is saying, I want to help you by myself. I'm not going to have another person step into your life right now. I'm going to do something divine for you. And all of a sudden, you discover you're doing things that you never thought you could do. You know, that, that's been the fun of our lifetime of ministry. It's been so chaotic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When I was too young, I started my first church. <laughs> All right? And I was told I was too young. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. <laughs> but the church grew, and enough people came, and we decided they wanted to build a church. And that's when I had to go to the district office and say, guys, I don't know what to do about a building. You need somebody that knows how to build. Goodbye. <laughs> now, in that city sits a neat church, and... Every year I check the records and it's still flourishing. But what I'm getting at is God knew that I was too young and too not knowing, lacking in knowledge and ability to build a building. I mean, I looked out there and I thought I was going to lay it out and I'm standing there and, I, I, and one of the other guys from school with me were both looking at that piece of property and we're trying to figure out where the church building is going to fit up. <laughs> We figured the best move would be to get out of there and let somebody else get in. Mm -hmm. All right, a couple of years later, I'm in Indiana, and I start another church. Only this time I get married. But she can't help me build a building. <laughs> she knows about as much about building a building as I do. <laughs> and so again, it's time to leave it and let somebody else come in and take over the building. And I discovered something the other day that I thought was absolutely mer miraculous. And it, you know, that's the wonder of this book. You find things, you can read it a hundred times, and then all of a sudden you see something. Amen. You know, when, when God wanted Israel to cross the Red Sea, he pulled Moses out of the desert, took him back to Egypt, and when it came to the Red Sea, he crossed it. But when it came to Jordan, God took him up a mountain and buried him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that what he did? Yep, yes. yep. All right? And he had somebody else take them across Jordan. And he had somebody else march them around the walls and watch the walls fall down. And Moses couldn't go that far. God's purpose for Moses was get my people out of Egypt, get them into where I want them. And he got them to the point where they were going to cross the river again. And God said, come up the mountain with me. Say goodbye to the people. <clears throat> now it's time for somebody else to carry it out. You're too old. I know. That's right. I hate that word. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, there are days when I feel too old. <laughs> and there are other days when I don't feel too old. And on those days, I want to tell God. <laughs> Your purpose, God's purpose for you, 
is to reach people yes. with the love of God. Hallelujah. That is so great. That's it. Thank you, Lord. And he wants to lift them up out of the mess their lives are in. Yeah, right. Thank you, Jesus. And give them a hope of heaven. Thank you. That's Thank God's you. purpose for your life. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. But all of us aren't going to work in the same place doing the same thing. That's right. And that's the wonderful part of serving God. Yeah. And I mean that seriously. That's where the, the marvel comes in. God has different work to be done, and He has people that He has chosen for those specific times and purposes. You follow me? Amen. But He doesn't expect you to do what, you, what He didn't, didn't prepare you to do. But you know what? Sometimes you think you're not prepared. And that's when God says, trust me. And you look at the book, can you look up and say, God, where in the world are you? I can't see you, how can I trust you? And that's where the adventure comes in. The adventure of your relationship with the God is just knowing that he's there. That he's with you. That he's always with you. That's, that's the, the, the delight. You know, I was talking to a young man a couple of weeks, a little over a week ago. He was in the office and see me and we were talking. And he's a young man getting started in ministry and, and it came and we were talking. And so I just felt impressed to tell him some things about how God has used Esther and me in different ways of doing things and things we never dreamed of, and never did, and never thought you'd ever do. And then all of a sudden you're doing it and God's enabled you. And this young man is looking at me and his eyes get bigger and they go pop out of his head. <laughs> and you don't start like this. You start where you are and God leads you. Amen. And all of a sudden you discover he opens doors that you didn't know existed. For sure. That all of a sudden he gives you an intelligence level you never dreamed you had. Thank you, God. And you can talk to people and all of a sudden coming out of your mouth is a river of living water that, that you didn't even know you possessed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For sure. What God is saying to us is, look, wake up, family. I've got plans for you. Mm -hmm. I want you to wake up to me and understand that beyond what you can imagine or think, I want to do them. And, and, and when we get to the point where we realize that God wants to help us, that we allow Him to help us. Yes, you, you follow me? Amen. Because if you don't let Him help you, huh. you're going to sit by the curb with a flat tire. Amen. And He's saying, let me help you. Now, I, I want you to understand that God sets people aside to do the things He wants them to do. All right? And sometimes he makes you think it's your idea. Yep. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are catching on and laughing. No. <laughs> Some of the rest of you will catch on one of these days. <laughs> and you'll discover all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> this was his idea. Amen. <laughs> but that's where, that's where the, the, the marvel of serving God comes. It's discovering that God has plans for you that you never dreamed of. That he doesn't sit down with you and say, at this time, and this is what you're going to do, and two years from now, this is what you're going to do, and then you're going to do this. That's not how God works. That's not how God works. That's the wonder of it. And I love the fact that God sets people aside to do certain things. Yes. That's that's where that's where really it, you discover the the joy of serving the Lord is when you get with other people that God has been using and you discover that He doesn't do the same thing for everyone. Yes, true. He's got your name at the top of the column, and this is what you're going to do. He's got their name at the top of the column, and this is what He's got planned for.